To understand the wave properties of light, let's first look at the behavior of waves on the surface of water. We vibrate the water's surface so that we can see the shadows of the waves on the screen. There appears a pattern of light and dark lines. This fringe pattern is caused by the interference of two different waves. It is a property of all waves. If light has wave properties, we should be able to observe the same phenomenon. Let's run an experiment to find out. Here we use double slits to divide the light into two separate beams. Let's look at the behavior of the light after it passes through the slits. The same kind of fringe pattern appears as with the water waves. This pattern is caused by the interference between the two beams of light after they pass through the slits. The bright areas on the fringe pattern show where the two beams strengthen each other, while the dark areas show where they weaken each other. This clearly shows that light exhibits the properties of waves. Let's regard light as a kind of wave and compare it in a different way with another phenomenon that also has wave properties, sound. As you can see, when we decrease the strength of sound waves, their amplitude also decreases until they finally disappear. This is another property of waves. Does this same phenomenon occur with light? To find out, we'll try another experiment. In this experiment, we use neutral density filters to reduce the amount of light gradually. We then convert the light into an electrical signal so we can observe on an oscilloscope how the light changes. We reduce the amount of light entering the filters. The number of signals which indicates the strength of the light has gradually decreased as well. Now we weaken the light even further. The overlapping signals separate and become more sporadic. Now we make the light still weaker. This light is too faint to be seen with the naked eye. The number of signals has decreased even more, but the strength of each signal does not drop below a certain point. This is clearly different from the phenomenon we observed with sound. The reason the signals do not decrease, no matter how weak the light, must be because light consists of some kind of minimal, non-divisible, particle-like units. In quantum mechanics, these units are called photons. So how can we explain the results of our earlier experiment that showed interference between waves? Does light lose its wave-like properties when its intensity decreases into the single photon region? To find out, let's observe the behavior of light in the region where individual photons can be observed. In this experiment, we use a photon counting Image Acquisition System, or PIAS, that was developed by Hamamatsu Photonics to capture and analyze events at extremely low light levels. The PIAS makes it possible to detect and record the spatial location of photons one at a time. This illustration shows the operating principle of the PIAS. 
the system converts extremely weak light into electronic signals, which are then amplified and stored as spatial signals and displayed on a television monitor. The pious can detect and record light that has an intensity as low as one billionth of a lux. The light from a starry sky has a brightness of one thousandth of a lux, so one billionth of a lux is a million times darker than that. Now let's start our experiment. Our light source is a low-pressure mercury lamp. We use ultraviolet light passed through a metal interference filter. The light has a wavelength of 253.7 nanometers. It passes through a single slit to increase coherence and then goes through the double slits. We observe and record its behavior. Now we reduce the amount of light with neutral density filters. The photon count is 100 per second. At this intensity, no more than one photon at a time will be in the test device. This is the light intensity region where we make our measurements. The experiment has begun. The particles of light that have passed through the slits appear on the monitor as small points. Three minutes later, the behavior of the particles seems completely random. The experiment continues. After 25 minutes, a pattern is emerging in the distribution of particles. Six hours later, a fringe pattern has appeared. Let's compare this pattern with the fringe pattern we obtained in our earlier experiment. They're exactly the same. Although we thought of the photons as individual particles, they formed interference fringes. However, a single particle usually cannot create an interference effect. Is this true in the case of photons as well? Let's find out how the individual photons passed through the two slits. We'll try shutting one of the slits. The number of detected particles drops by half, and no interference fringes appear. This shows that each photon passes through both of the slits simultaneously and interferes with itself. While we have shown that light has particle-like properties, this experiment also shows that light behaves like waves when it passes through two slits at the same time. That means that light has the properties of both waves and particles. When we explain the nature of light, we must, of course, take into consideration quantum mechanics. But it is also very important to verify that theory with experiments like this. At Hamamatsu Photonics, we have achieved good results by conducting experiments on many different problems related to photons. Beginning with our Young's interference experiment, 
conducted in 1981, we have also studied the coherence of photons, created a hologram in the single photon region, and examined, experimentally, the problem of the colors of a photon. <laughs>